Hey guys, Brian back with another video and today is going to be a home project for something I installed about six years ago in our kitchen and this is a five stage filtration water system. This is used for kind of consumable water in the kitchen, drinking water, as well as for the ice maker in our fridge. This has been a great addition to our kitchen. It's eliminated all the waste of carrying bottled water and going to the supermarket all the time for it and provides a higher quality water supply for your house. It's pretty easy to install. It comes with everything you need in the kit and it's even easier to maintain. So if you want to see how you do it, stick around. I want to show you how we put this into another house. The water filter system we'll be installing today is the same one I have in my house. It's an ROES 50. It's an APAC water system. I'm not affiliated with them. I've just installed a couple of these and I'm really happy with their products. The system comes with the three filters in their housings that I'm showing here, as well as pre-installed for the stage four and five membrane filters that come installed in the header unit at the top. It also comes with an accumulator storage tank, which you see at the top of this frame, and all the instructions and all the accessories and parts that need to go with it. Additionally, you can buy this ice maker kit and what this will allow you to do is tee off for the ice maker or water supplier both in your fridge so you don't ever have to change those filters again. This kit also comes with a really nice stainless faucet and you can choose different finish for matching your kitchen. Uh, in the old days, this came with a plastic one. It was very cheap and you had to purchase one on the side, but it's really cool that APEC is now including this with their basic kit. While we've got everything laid out, it's important to think about where you want to install this. In this house, there's plenty of room to put this underneath the sink. In mine, there was not. So I actually mounted this in my basement, but the option is yours and the connections are all the same. Now I'm just showing you how to install the water filters. This is the first through third stages. They just screw in place. The hardest part is just getting the cartridge inside this little tube to line up. You screw it on hand tight and then you can use the spanner wrench to crank it down. They don't need to be overly tight. They have pretty thick gaskets that compress well. These first three stages need to be changed by the manual about every six to 12 months. So I change them once a year. And then the stage four and five, the membrane filters need to be changed every two to three years. They're pretty inexpensive. I pretty much set them on auto purchase on Amazon. So when they show up, I change them and I never have to remember to do them. With the filters in place, we can now move on to the tank. The tank has a shutoff valve on the top and you're gonna install that just by hand with six to eight wraps of Teflon tape on the threaded output stem connection. And then just putting it out by hand and you can just crank it just a little bit with the wrench. You don't need to over tighten these as always. They're plastic, so you really don't wanna reef down on these like metal fittings. Now, before we go much further, I can't stress enough that you should know where your whole house or apartment shutoff is for your water. Turn it off, take the pressure off the system, and then start messing with hose fittings like this. These old gate or globe valves, they have old packing, they can be kind of dried out, they tend to leak, uh, but it's nothing worse than just fighting pressure, so there's no reason. Turn it off and start working with the plumbing. Here I've just loosened this hose off for the water supply to the sink because we're going to put in a T. Now this kit comes with two separate connections, either a half inch or three eighths. So it's pretty adaptable to whichever you have as a supply for your existing sink. In this case, I'm gonna go with a three eighths connection and I applied Teflon tape and I'm just screwing these stems together. This will basically tee off your existing water supply so that when you put everything back in place, you still have your threaded connection again. It's just moving it up so you can tee off for this little shut off valve for your new water supply tap on your sink. these parts assembled, we can now thread it onto the plumbing stop coming into the top of the cabinet. I'll thread this by hand and then I'll reef down with pliers here so that we can get a nice solid firm connection. The way in which these fittings are configured is such that the sink faucet is coming out the top, the water tap is coming out to the right, and it has its own little needle shutoff valve, which you'll see on the right side. With the needle valve fully closed, I'm just opening up the water supply to make sure I don't have any leaks on these new connections that I've introduced. Every time you add new connections to a system, there's always a chance of a leak. So kind of test it as you go, and this way you won't have to deal with many leaks at the same time later. Now this step's a little awkward in this case because I don't have a ton of room next to this garbage disposal, but I'm just using a pencil to mark on the holes where the screws are gonna go, and I'm kind of pre-placing the screws separately so I don't have to hold the water filter at the same time. And then when I go to put them back in place after, 
the screws go right in without fighting too much. When you're installing this, you just want to make sure that you've got enough clearance. As you can see, I'm just underneath the sink, but there's plenty of room to pull this filter off and change it later, maintaining the serviceability of this system. Next, we can make the drain connection by drilling a quarter inch hole in the wastewater drainage pipe and then applying a small gasket sticker that goes on top. And I really recommend sticking the push to connect tubing, this black tubing through the fitting into the hole before you screw down the screws too much. This way you won't have to get any misalignment and you can work it out before you tighten the screws down. You really wanna wreath these down to compress the gasket to get a watertight seal. The next connection to make is with this red pipe and this is called a compression fitting. It has a plastic ferrule, sometimes they're metal, inside. You do not need to put Teflon tape on the threaded fitting part of this connection. Uh, the compression nut will actually do all the sealing itself and you also don't need to over tighten these. You wanna reef down pretty tight by hand but don't, don't kill these because they really bite into this plastic pipe pretty good. And now I'm just laying out the faucet. This is probably the most nerve wracking part, drilling through a stone counter. It's actually really easy if you just take some precautions and take your time to lay it out. In this uh, configuration, I laid it out center between the right basin and at about the midpoint between the back of the backsplash and the front edge of this stone countertop of this undermount sink. And then I put the faucet in place just to make sure I liked the position and uh, they liked where it was being installed. Now I'm using a diamond coated drill bit. This is kind of like a hole saw and I highly recommend that you put this into a sponge and kind of drill a piece through it. And this will keep uh, the water that I'm going to soak underneath the sink and continuously add to it absorbed into the cut and keep it really cool. The biggest trick I can tell you when you're drilling in stone is to start out on the edge of the drill bit and kind of lean your way up into the cut. If you start straight up like I'm here where I'm already into the material and do that from the beginning, you're gonna walk all over the countertop and wish you never did that. And you're gonna scratch it and there's no return. Just remember to go nice and slow as you'll be through the countertop before you know it. And you can only do this once, so get it right. Now I'm just gonna clean this up and feed the faucet in here and connect it from below. With the faucet installed, you install a washer and nut from underneath. I didn't actually record this. It's really awkward to get that in place. Uh, tighten it hand tight with the wrench as best you can. So the next step is gonna be different depending on your application where I'm actually drilling a hole through the bottom of the cabinet to install the ice maker line that goes through the basement. The built-in fridge in this house is too complicated to remove so I basically removed the old connection from below and I'm just gonna connect it down through the basement. It's not ideal but it was the easier of the two options that I had that day to get this done. And I started this by turning the shutoff valve for the water supply to the old fridge line. And I'm gonna reuse this braided stainless steel hose, which is relatively new, is in good shape. And I'm gonna connect this to the PEX tubing with a compression fitting. And once again, just using two wrenches to tighten this down on these fittings, get them hand tight. Don't need to go overly crazy. These ferrules bite into this plastic tubing pretty good. And just keep in mind on these hose fittings that they have rubber gaskets. So you do not need to apply Teflon tape when there's ever a rubber gasket like that. So here's actually a recorded section because we all make mistakes. I'm gonna show you mine in this project. And that was to connect the input side and tee off of that. What I really needed to do was connect the output side and tee off to that to the ice maker because I wanna bring filtered water to the ice maker not unfiltered water. And then put the shut off outboard of that. So I just swapped this later on and I didn't actually videotape it. But just keep in mind and pay attention to your connections. When you're done with the system, you really wanna do a once through and make sure that everything's good. And then the last connection is this yellow hose back to the tank. Again, just push it in, tug on it, make sure it's not loose, and these push to connect fittings are a piece of cake. And now the fun part of the project is to turn the water supply on and make sure we didn't get any leaks with a flashlight. 
In this case, I didn't have any, but in yours you might. And check a few hours later to make sure that a little drip doesn't develop. You never know. With this all set, what we can do is wait for the pressure to build into the system. And this tank is an accumulator tank. It's actually making up for the pressure that you're losing through the system. And once it's fully filled and the entire system's at the pressure of the street water you're providing to it, you can test it out and open up the faucet. And what you want to do is let this tank fill for about two to three hours until it's fully under pressure. And then you're going to open up the faucet until it completely empties to a trickle and then let it fill again and the system's ready to use. One thing you can do is test your water with a water quality sensor meter. They're pretty inexpensive on Amazon. I'll put a link below. And you can also buy a water test quality kit for checking for things like bacteria and heavy metals. But mostly you're gonna find that with this system, this water is even cleaner than anything you've drank before. And that's it everybody. Enjoy free, clean drinking water like you never had before. And if you like this video, don't forget to comment and like the video. And if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel for more projects like this. Thanks for watching.